Hey guys, welcome back. This is podcast number two in chapter six, when today we are going to look specifically at photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is the process of producing glucose, okay, notice the OSC ending here, it's a sugar, by combining water, or H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. And this is a very general description of photosynthesis. There's a lot of steps that go into it, but we're going to be looking at, you know, in general, from start to finish, what's the process, what do we get? And we can write a chemical reaction for this. And so we're looking at taking water, okay, so, and we need six waters to do this. So six H2O plus six CO2, or six carbon dioxides, because we need one carbon dioxide for every water. And we mash those together and we get C6H12O6. This is the glucose. That's your sugar. And then we get six oxygens floating out as part of that. And right here in the middle, that middle step or that arrow is representing where light, okay, because plants need light. This is where the light comes into play um, in this chemical reaction. And photosynthesis is actually a combination of two processes. The first one is the light reaction and the second is the Calvin cycle. And these are like two wheels on a car. They're both running at the same time. They're both um, cycling at the same time to produce this reaction. They work together. And the light reaction is when water is hit with light photons or energy from light. So light is coming in okay, as a wave. So each of these arrows is representing light. And the water is split. It's broken by the light into oxygen. Okay, So that's the first part of the reaction. And what ends up happening is we produce another chemical called ATP. And ATP is, is energy. Okay, ATP is energy. And what the ATP does is it comes into the Kelvin cycle and it allows the rest of the process to happen. So we've got the water being produced into oxygen and then the carbon dioxide in the Kelvin cycle is taken, picks up some energy from the ATP, so this will slide in here, and in turn that produces glucose, E6, H12, O6, or sugars. And then it cycles again, it goes back. So water again is split, produces an ATP molecule, which then fuels the carbon dioxide turning into glucose. So if we look at a picture of it, this is what we've got going on. So we start with water happening inside the thylakoid, the chlorophyll. Okay, so the light comes in, and we're producing this ATP molecule right there. The ATP then goes in and gives energy to the Kelvin cycle, which takes the carbon dioxide and produces sucrose as a product, or glucose as a product. Okay, So we've got two processes happening here, the light reaction and the Kelvin cycle. And now the tricky thing with chlorophyll is that not all light is used in photosynthesis. There's actually two forms of chlorophyll. It's A and B. And so we've got a picture down here, or a graph, and you need to write in the wavelengths. Or you need to, um, if you have colored pencils, shave in the colors. But what we can see is that chlorophyll B, this is showing absorbance over here on the left, so how much is it taking in? Chlorophyll B really takes in a lot of energy, if you draw a line down. It takes in a lot of this blue wavelength right in here. Chlorophyll A does the same, but it's on the other end of the spectrum, and it kind of takes in this orangish, reddish, wavelength. Everything down here means there's very low absorbance. So if this was 0 and 100, we'd have very, very low absorbance down here. Notice where this low absorbance is. It's right here in this green wavelength. This is why plants are green. Because plants, or the chlorophyll specifically, does not take in that green wavelength of light. So if we're looking at a rainbow, that green is the one that's bouncing back to our eyes from the plant. So according to the graph above, which colors of light are best absorbed by chlorophyll? And then which color is the least absorbed? Okay, so remember chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B both absorb different colors. So take your peak, draw a line down, and you get those, those colors for the best absorbed. And then which one is the lowest? And that explains again why plants are the color that they are.